Hello, this is Matt Moser, a partner with Alchemy Solutions, and what I'd like to do is continue um, demonstrating how Net Cobol for Windows uh, can call out to a .NET DLL, and we're going to focus on um, a C Sharp DLL this time, as you can see um, on your screen. And in addition to that, um, we'll cover the COBOL side on how to make that happen, as well as some of the interim steps. There was a video that was put together before this, which kind of went into detail on how you can find some of the command line routines. Uh, so if you have not watched that, please do so, uh, because it's pretty important in knowing the steps and the detail of how to run and find those routines. I will cover them, but I'll cover them real quickly. So without too much ado, uh, and it also covered all the steps on how to expose your uh, DLL to COM. So again, um, very important to do. So the first step in the DLL, um, being able to be seen by uh, v or COBOL um, up underneath NetCobol for Windows, is to go to the properties, and then on the application tab, select assembly information, and make sure this is turned on. Make assembly com visible, component object model visible. That way um, you know that uh, you've done the first step of what you need to do. Um, I did cover in the other tutorial very briefly. There is a register for com interop that is there for the developers. Uh, so you can use that. Um, in order to avoid having to type some of the commands, but when you distribute, you really want to make sure that um, you're set correctly. This register for com interop will build a TLB file for you, which is a type library file, which is needed when you register your DLL. So, at the very minimum, it can do that for you um, in terms of uh, distributing your application. And then there's signing. In order to be able to um, register your DLL so that it can be found um, by the COM interop uh, using regASM, which we covered in the prior tutorial. Um, you need to sign the assembly and make sure it has a strong name key file. Um, so those are the pieces that you need. Again, real quickly, assembly information, make sure it's COM visible. Um, alternately, you can use the register for COM interop. You don't have to. Um, it does help during the development phase, or you can do, and you do definitely need to do the signing, and that's if you want to put into global assembly cache, um, or if you want to register where your code base is going to be kept. Uh, so that's the pieces that are needed there. And then the next piece is, here's the, uh, I'll call it, lack of a better term, the DOS interface, the command line interface. Um, again, this was all covered in the prior tutorial, how we can get here, and it is the, uh, the, the pieces that you need, and we'll do it here, is you need to do the type library, so it's TLB EXP space, the name of the DLL that you wish to register, DLL2.dll and not register, I'm sorry, in order to put the type libraries out and which it just did for us and then the next phase is to go in and to register the DLL and to notice I'm in the same directory where my DLL is kept and register C sharp DLL L2 dot DLL and I'm going to put a slash code base which says register it to where the code is that I'm registering it from, so in this particular folder. Um, you do have the option to run a utility called gacutil i and then you can put the name of the DLL and then it'll put it into the global assembly cache if that's where you wish to run it from. But that's an option that's up to you. So um, actually that's really about it from the C-sharp side, not too bad. And what we'll do now is we'll go into the COBOL side and cover that real quickly. And again, this was covered in the other tutorial. You have COM. Since you're using COM, which is the component object model, you need to have it declared in your repository, which we have here. And then you need to get an instance of it, lack of a better term, 
WS ActiveX DLL object reference com. So it's like saying it's a pickaxe or something, only it's an object reference. And so, and then the the name, the pointer, or where we're actually storing the DLL, and what we want to call in terms of the the functions within it or the class within it is C sharp DLL two, and the class is class common funks. Now, this is no different than if you wanted to call VB6 or some other ActiveX DLL at this point in time. So, all the um, code and your background knowledge on how to do that is useful here. And so we come down here a little bit further, and you always need to create your object first. So we're going to invoke com again, component object model, create object using com class name, which is this. And then we're going, then it says after create on your display, and then it's going to invoke add using i and j with a return. And I have those hard coded at one, two, with zero being the return now until the total gets done running. And so it's going to invoke ActiveX DLL returning this. And so basically if we go ahead and we say build, which we just did, and I'll close out of this, and we'll say run, We'll double click it, bring this down. You notice it around one and two for three. So that's really about it. Um, we've just um, shown how to uh, call C sharp DLL from um, COBOL up underneath Net COBOL for Windows. So uh, have a great day. Any questions, concerns, um, you can reach me at matt underscore moser at mosersoft.com. Or you can always reach our um, great support center. Again, the source will be available up on the uh, Microsoft Partner page samples. Um, take care. Bye.